Hi everybody. We have two Les Paul Juniors here. One is this super clean 1960, and uh, this is an excellent example of something that's really um, uh, will go up in value. An investment grade guitar. Finding guitars like this, this old, that are 64, 65 years old, that's really hard. Um, to find them in this kind of condition because they are so well loved and they've been such utility things. Keeping in mind that during the 70s and 80s when guys like Mountain or Keith Richards were playing these type of guitars, they were just cheap. They were 500 bucks. I can't tell you how many of these we sold for 500, 1500, 4500, 7500, 8500, and now $15,000 is the range. But so many times people call me and they ask me, What's my 59 Junior worth? I don't know. Does it look like this? Or does it look like this? And you can see right away the fade here. This guitar is still its bright cherry finish. And this guitar has seen a lot of fade. This guitar has significant wear on the back. This guitar has just the slightest bit of wear on the back. This guitar has its original bridge and tuners. This guitar does not. And when I turn this guitar around, yeah, right? Do you see it? Now do you see it? Yeah, right. So um, this clean 1960 Les Paul Jr., they're famous for tone. a Marshall Studio 15 here. This guitar is, it's very, very clean, and this is a 14,000, 14,250, right? So this is a cool guitar. The cases on these juniors are, um, are always kind of beaten up and destroyed. Very few people spent the money it took to get the hard shell case on these, and mostly people take the hard shell case and use them for regular bursts. So this guitar, is also well this is a 1959 very little difference between the two this kind of has it's an early one it kind of has a 59 neck 59s was the first year they have big frets 59s are a little uh they're a little smaller neck than a 58 typically but it's that perfect size for a lot of people i got this guitar out of a studio in la and this guitar is pretty beat up and <laughs> First off, this guitar, very resonant. It sounds like an acoustic guitar. That is one of the first things any of us do. This guitar also has this device on the back, which is actually hum canceling. And it's a new electronic device that has a, a push push pot. Listen, hum. Here, I'm going to turn this up. Hum. Less hum. Much less hum. If you're in a studio, like this has lived its life, thank you Oliver Lieber, who is a brilliant songwriter and plays drums with Brian from McCartney's band, amongst other things. He's a great songwriter, killer guitar player, he has a studio that he uses this in, and this quiets down the guitar. All the parts for this, the bridge and that, come with the guitar, but this guitar will be quite a bit less. This guitar would probably sell at the 15 zone. We think it's underpriced at 14. This guitar will probably be in the 12 zone. So you'll save money on this. It is completely unbroken. There's original a bag of original parts. We could restore it for you. But this whole thing back here keeps it quiet. And these screws are where the normal back plate would go. So the screws, are again, are where the normal back plate would sit you could put the back plate back on. This hasn't been on here this long, but here is maybe the biggest point of this video. 
hang with me here because I'm going to now show you the frets on this. You just heard this. Sorry about that. I'm going to turn that down. right? Uh, the frets on this guitar are pretty worn, so now you have to decide. You have this guitar, do you refret it? That's what we have to decide. We just took this in. We are looking at it and we look at these frets and they, they sound good. You kind of can't hear, but to sell it to someone else, you should change your frets. And really, even up the board, up to and including like ninth fret, it, there's a lot of wear and tear. You can re-crown a fret and get rid of some of that. You can taper off the fret a little bit. You can flatten the fret out, and then you kind of get bad uh, intonation. So you'll see frequently when we list stuff that has refret on it, we parenthetically put, you're welcome. Why? Because it's a tough decision for most people whether or not to replace frets. Let me get be clear here. If you have a clean example and you want to like put bigger frets, jumbo frets, little frets, Martin frets, I like the big Martin frets, don't do it. But if you have a guitar like this that has some wear and has been in duty for a while, playing like this guitar has, it's lived in a studio for a long time, Lots of guys have played this, including Brian from Paul McCartney's band and other cats that our friend Oliver has um, uh, had in his studio. You, they get worn out and you should replace them. Don't, it's like having bad rubber on your vintage car. It's just going to wear out on you. It's going to give you bad intonation and it's just time. We will take care of that for you. So the next time you see this, you're going to see this video long before you see the frets. I am going to put frets on this anytime. It's almost Halloween and it'll probably take us a couple of weeks to get to this because we're busy getting to all the customer guitars, but we are going to refret this with the exact same fret. And again, if you have a clean original guitar that has survived these last 60 years without anybody modifying it, it will go up in value. Don't screw around with it. But if you have an old beater guitar, not necessarily beater, but a guitar that's seen some duty, that might have some modifications on it, that might have some wear and tear on it, change your frets by all means. It won't devalue the guitar. Years ago, they used to say, don't refret stuff. Now, frankly, the level of craftsmanship, the competition amongst repair guys, we have three guitar guys that work for us that do great fret work. And you need to replace frets by somebody that knows what they're doing. I would always suggest using the factory original frets. That's the way the guitar was designed. That is almost the end of my video, except for this.